All right, all. So here we are on the USS free ship. <laughs> I just couldn't think what else to name it. This is the Paladin battle cruiser that you get for free from Crucial or from Alienware. So I discovered there are still keys out in the wild. And I'll be showing you how to get them, including the links little things like that I also wanted to show you a budget friendly way to build the ship and first we're gonna go over stations I did not use any temporal stations the reason I called the build budget friendly and not free to play is there is no free to play I mean you have to grind for everything you want I have videos on grinding if you need tips but hey I'm using all normal stuff okay thanks to the boiler effect so we're gonna start with traits it reduces my cooldowns and to use a term loosely from other games it puts them on a global cooldown. Now you can separate those if you're doing a torpedo build or, or whatever with consoles. But it's really nice to have because I don't have to go aux to bat anymore. So the boiler effect is number one. Just like on my last video, inspirational leaders on it for its extra 10% chance to proc a bridge officer ability and a plus 10 to most starship skills for 15 seconds. All right. I'm still using operative. You're going to see a lot of repetitiveness from the Nikor build on, on here because I want to show that you don't really have to go that crazy to get a ship to do 100K or more, you know? Context is for kings. If you did take damage in the past three seconds, plus to all damage resistance ratings, if you did not take damage in the past second, 1% bonus all damage. So that's a category two bonus or category one. Unconventional systems using control ability negative 7% to universal consoles. Kind of important on this build because when we get into consoles, I'm using Domino and I'm also using computer assisted algorithms. Plus this affects on the, on the other traits I'm using. Innocuous for its 5% crit severity and negative threat generation which doesn't seem to work because all of my team seems to score pretty low. Self-modulating fire for its outgoing energy weapon and projectile plus 50% shield penetration for 10 seconds. Regular old beam barrage for completing your reputation. Right? No, it's for completing your R&D actually. In beams up to 15 that's all you gotta get up to is 15 all right they also have a kinetic version of this when you get projectiles to 15 Terran targeting system 15% crit severity when you get hit with a critical hit it reduces your speed for by 10% for five seconds normally I don't feel this on this ship I do Resonating payload, minus physical and kinetic resistance rating for 20 seconds per stack. And to bring it up the backside, superior beam training for an additional 7.5% bonus beam weapons damage. Okay. Now, from the legendary the Daredex, which is available through C-Store. I use rapid emitter armaments, 
plus 15% bonus torpedo weapon damage for 10 seconds. Fires three heavy plasma torpedoes at foe, each dealing 27,000 and change. Okay, plus 660.2 plasma damage every one second for 15 seconds. That's teamed up with Subspatial Warheads, which is a, comes off the Sona. Yeah, that's the word I wanted. Sona battleship, which your high yields turn into a subspace rift that deal physical damage. Um, this used to say radiation, but now it's physical. Now, I don't have a DPRM. I do have the domino console. So to speed up some weapon fire haste, we have emergency weapons power which is from the C store. It's from one of the inquiry variants. I believe it's the Arbiter. Calm before the storm. You gain one stack of calm every 10 seconds. Each stack of calm gives you plus five all damage resistance ratings. At 10 stacks of comms for 20 seconds, remove all stacks of calm and gives you 33% fire cycle haste to energy weapons. And it also gives you bridge officer cooldown. This is off of uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, the Cardassian ship. I forgot. Uh, Cardass. Yeah. Okay. It's off of the Cardassian Intel flight deck dreadnought. This is best hope of the empire. Plus 10% bonus damage to all damage. So there's another bonus going on there. Plus 50,000 temporary hit points. This goes off with beam overload and lance abilities. It does not go off. It's still broken or goes off very little if you use like to extend the time of beam overload. You won't get that effect. Then I'm using Strike from the Shadows. So it decreases your threat, right? And targets not targeting you, right? It's an extra 5% crit chance and 5% all bonus damage. I am using torpedoes, not only the magical torpedo trait. So I'm using torpedo pre-fire sequence at 15.6% bonus torpedo damage. 41.3% destructible for torpedo flight speed. Now, I haven't seen any torpedo at high yield. Not the uh, particle missions, not the grav metrics. I've seen them all get the bonus, even though here it says such as high yield plasma i had this discussion with someone such as is like ie or example of talus duality because i do have a lot of hull five percent crit chance based on hull capacity maximum 7.5 percent at 200 hull capacity precision first crit chance I mean, crit hit chance, sorry, which I should actually swipe out for this run and do the minor shield penetration, which is superior. Oh, that's superior shield repair. Okay, I would have felt really dumb there. You know, actually, I should do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. I forgot about this guy, and I haven't used him for a while. Magne magnified Firepower. And this one is a bonus 6.3% to all weapon damage. So we're going to try that one out. Enhance Armor Penetration, plus 6.3. Advanced Targeting Systems with a 20% crit severity okay so that's basically it in a nutshell here skill tree 
I don't have energized hull plating. I do have regular hull plating. Um, and two points in control expertise, one in drain because I use a lot of phasers. Duty officers. We have a beam overload for 35% additional shield penetration. Stacking crit chance for firing energy weapons. Stacking crit severity for firing energy weapons. Improved hazard emitters and two DOFs for increased hull regeneration. Now as for the ship itself, it is loaded with bonuses. First of all, the one of the best phaser beams in the game, the Terran targeting. Terran targeting. <laughs> Terran task force phaser beam array. Now the gist of the matter is the more times it hits a target, the harder it hits in, the more damage it does. It's just an awesome weapon. Then we have the prolonged entanglement phaser beam array, which you get from Phoenix prize packs. They drop quite often. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I got one just like now. Let's see. Do I get a token that gives me one? No. It's usually the purple tokens. In this case, I got a rare token, so. Yeah. But if I would have got a 10 pack for sure, I would have got, you know, that beam array. Then we have the phaser wide angle dual heavy beam bank. Um, this thing on beam overload, I've seen it do up to two to 400K by itself on a more elite type build. So of course on a budget build, it's going to be on there and it's on there with its console. So we have the two piece on there because it's got the console. I do have the torpedo also for its 1% crit severity buff for 20 seconds stacks up to 25 times. And then you get this magical torpedo that fires 360 degrees at any enemy lower than 50%. The hardest hitting torpedo in the game, the bio molecular photon torpedo. That's also from reputation. So you can make it elite fleet colony deflector dish. It is re-engineered to give me a little bit more control. The prevailing innovative engines to give you your zoom zoom every time you gives you a burst of speed right out the bank. The Marsilio harmonic matter antimatter warp core paired with Tilly shield, which does additional shield damage to your AI or your opponents. Now, when you look at the two piece set, they also give you 120% hull regeneration. Hull regeneration scales with maximum hull, which is really nice. The dark matter torpedo, which is actually one of the pieces to this set. And this is also from reputation. You can craft it. I have an omnidirectional crafted phaser beam array with pen. That means I got a little extra penetration on this one beam. The trilium enhanced omni directional beam array. You cannot re-engineer this. So the way it drops is the way you get it. The only thing you can do is rerun the mission until you get one like this. Okay. And then I have the kinetic cutting beam. I have it on there because for some reason, you still can't put three phaser omnis on the back of a build. So, since I was going with the whole fire cycle haze thing, the two-piece set on this is fire cycle haze. No firing energy weapon. Um, it's only 2.5% chance, but it's there. The trilium set is the same way. It provides 5% fire cycle haste for energy weapons and flight speed. 
So the Trialium console is this one. The reinforced armaments. It gives you power transfer rate, hull restoration, and hull capacity. And just to show you, there it is. The Dominion or Domino, as they call it, console. Phaser damage and accuracy. But the clicky is fire cycle haste. Bonus weapon damage. Recharge time to, to bridge officer abilities. Recharge speed for torpedo weapons. And every time you kill a foe, you get a plus two. It extends the time. So that's cute. From reputation, here's the second part of the kinetic cutting beam. Okay, there's the stats again for the 2%. I still don't get what a negative 500 is. How do you go net more than negative 100? Anyway, but that's the partner of the kinetic cutting beam. And here's the partner to the biomolecular photon. It's the hydrodynamic compensator. So since I have two pieces, I get another 7.5% bonus phaser damage. The console itself is very cute. Plus three to engines, plus three to auxiliary, plus 22.7 to weapon accuracy, plus 30.3% flight turn. Very nice. From the Lobby store. The bio neuro infusion circuit, hull capacity, control expertise, and crit severity. From the storyline, ah, uh, ba 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 It is from Leap of Faith. You get the Fecklair tormented engine, increased non -ha hazard damage over time. Um. It increases fire, radiation, plasma, and physical damage and has a chance of dealing a dot of 1,521.8 fire damage. So if you're using an experimental weapon, it has fire damage, it boosts it. If you're using Tholian console, if you're doing a kinetic build, it boosts it. This thing is there for my subspace tears, by the way. And then here's Lorca's Ambition, which is uh, 3.9 crit chance, 7.9 weapon power settings, 157.5 shield penetration. And that makes up the third piece to Tilly's set. That is from Reputation. From your fleet Spire, I have three. Okay. I want you to take note. The first console gives me 39.4% phaser and 2% crit chance. And if you notice, it says 49,798 TP rarity upgrade. This one says 95. This one says 18, but they're all 39.4. Um, there's something wrong where it's not displaying this, but after three, you do get a diminishing return. The magic number is four, anything after four, then you throw this guy in or this guy. I throw them in anyway. So let's uh, go into public queue and see how we do, right? Do I go to sleep? Do I, what do I do? What do I do? Let's just uh, get this ready. Backslash. Combat log. One. So when it pops, we'll just be ready to go. By the way, my fleet is running its damage bonus. Okay. And when I get in there, I will use a, a piece of uh, Jovanite. And Jovanite, what it does is it gives you 100 starship hull capacity for 900 seconds. These guys right here, they give a plus 10 
to each stat, engineering, science, and tactical. They're the gold ones when you go to your fleet star base. The reason I recommend the gold ones is the timer stops when you log off the character. When you log back on, it's there. Okay. I do want to mention the Komarashi Maru. I see a lot of people calling it out when it's like 50 seconds, 40 seconds. The buffs on it are only at max. 45 seconds normally you get 30 second buffs they're random so setting it off closer to the time of starting the actual queue is probably a little better so if you set it off let's say i don't know 20 seconds 15 seconds before it starts that's probably when you want to activate it and for those of you wondering why i didn't use temporal abilities well I want to make this easy for people that don't understand the temporal abilities and show you that the ship can fly just fine with crafted gear. So here we go, guys. We just got to wait for somebody to hit the switch. And if it's a long wait, yeah, I won't make you wait. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, drop a like. Join me in the comments. Hang out with me. Come on, Discord. Okay, we're going to choose this one right here for flight speed. I'm going to start the parser, which I hope is open somewhere. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. So, at 26 seconds, I think... Oh, this guy's not in the fleet. Neither is this guy. Hopefully they accept to get the damage boost. See, like now, it's 16. Boom. I'll give them my damage boost. If I had Terran goodbye, I would have so much bonus already from all these little kills. I have an awesome tank on my team, by the way. If I could, I'd have his baby. So everything's going pretty good, and I got to admit, I do have a decent team. No complaints. I see there's a guy over there that's not really doing too much damage-wise, but he's keeping everything off of me. The poor guy died. He was keeping the team safe, which was really cool. That is a team player. So this guy is almost gone. All right. Okay. 
Ah, man. It's going to make me click off the screen to look for the combat log. Usually, like, other people like to see their numbers. So, I like to put them in. So, here's the combat log for this video. And I am Feral Child at 194.713 DPS. The uh, guy that died was actually doing 56k. But I'm pretty sure if I click around, he was uh, healing people and stuff. So... Is his name Darren? Thank you very much for being on the team, and also my juggernaut, who was only doing three thousand in damage, but was keeping like everything off of us. It was almost like a organized team there for a minute. So right before we go, guys. Really quick, I'm going to run through how to get the ship for free. Okay, so if you go to either Google itself and type in Alienware Temporal Agent Pack, it's going to come up with the link for the Alienware. And boom, look, I'm logged in already and it just generated a new code for me. Also, it, every time you claim a code, make sure you log in, claim the items, log out, and claim a code. Okay? Crucial also has them. So you can... I'm not going to click this because I don't want to keep wasting keys on people. I will have both links in the description. Um, with my affiliate links and stuff. And thank you for hanging out with me. Hey, I hope you learned something and see well, you next all time. All right. So before you leave, I want to let you know about Rakuten. I have $463 of cash back I've already gotten. They're sending me my next check for $80.15. They send out these checks two and three times a year. Um, if you don't see on the splash page the store you want to go to, just type in the name in the search bar. It will let you know if there's cash back or not. Um, those $80 and change I'm getting back is just basically me shopping at Walmart, getting paper towels, kitty litter, stuff like that. And it will tell you when it's active. It's never less than 1% and it's never more than 15% of your purchase that you'll get back cash back. Now, if you're on a website that does not give you cash back, then join Honey. Honey will run is another browser extension and it will run through every coupon code to see if you have a coupon for that website. So getting money back for buying things like sugar, coffee, rice, beans, condiments that you would buy normally is really nice. There are affiliate links below. And check them out. Save yourself some money and support the channel at the same time. And if you don't have a cashback card, I've put in a link for the Quicksilver cashback card. It's another affiliate link. It will help the channel out. And basically what it does is when you're at checkout at Walmart, you pay with a cashback card. So whatever you get from Rakuten, whether it be 1% to 15% back, you will get the additional whatever your card gives you, which is usually between 1% and 5% back cash back. So if you want to save money, this is the way to go.